Today, I wanted to show you a more realistic scenario of what my typical workload looks like during a typical day on all three of these machines. M2 Pro over here, M1 Max, and an M2 Max. I've got Chrome open with 15 tabs. I've got my Notes app in the background. I use that quite often. Notion, which is a nice little app I use for keeping track of notes and things. I got my to-do list application. I do have a couple of instances of uh, Visual Studio Code open here, and I've mirrored this setup on all three three of these machines. None of these have full batteries either, so it represents kind of a middle day situation. So today we'll see if running a combination of single core and multi-core builds of real and sample projects working with Xcode is gonna be affected by the differences in these machines. Because you might just save a few bucks, well, more than a thousand bucks actually, if you go for the M2 Pro here, if these results are close enough. I'm gonna use this open source mobile app called Movie Swift UI. It's a Swift project and it's for iOS. It's uh, open source. You can check it out. I'll link to it down below. It looks pretty cool. Let's pop this open and see how long it takes to open an Xcode. All right, let's go. So there's about five seconds on each one of those machines. Okay, 4.38 seconds on the M2 Max. Very close. So we're looking at about five seconds to open the project. In fact, I'm going to close this project again and reopen it once the files are done processing. Yeah, okay. Now it's 3.26 seconds over here, 3.1 seconds, and 3.16 seconds so pretty inconsequential now let's pick an ios device i haven't used before iphone 14 sounds good iphone 14 okay and i'm gonna run this application which is gonna build it and start up the simulator install it on the simulator and start up the app we'll start with the m1 max and let's go build succeeded that's good there's iphone 14 sim all right i'm getting a blank screen here oh there we go okay so that was 25 seconds m2 pro build succeeded there's our sim. The simulator does look a little bit slower on this one. Maybe that's just my perception though. Not timing the simulator here. And there we go. So this one was a little bit longer. This is 29.8 seconds for this one. And finally, the M2 Max. Let's go. There's our sim. Okay, 28 seconds. <laughs> I don't know if that's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I expected. Now, uh, because this is giving us real data on a real API and it doesn't paint anything until the data is available, it might not be the best test. So what I'm going to do is actually use my app for the next test. None of these seem sluggish by any means. The simulator pops up pretty fast. Uh, the simulator interaction is fast. Yeah. And all these interacting with Xcode, even with all the stuff in the background, all the apps working in the background, interacting with Xcode is really swift, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to close up Xcode here and we're going to move on to another test. And this one is a cross-platform mobile app uh, that's actually a real project out in the app stores right now. And I'm going to target Xcode build right now and the iOS platform. Uh, this also has the Android component, which I'll do in separate videos. So I want to make sure that our simulators are turned off because that's part of what we're trying to figure out here. And uh, this is using native script uh, built on the NX a mono repo. So first I'm going to clean the project and then we're going to run it. It may seem to you like I'm sitting here for five minutes, but actually I've been doing this for hours. So if you haven't had a chance to hit that like button yet, go ahead and hit it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, while these machines are sitting here nice and tight, I have not heard any fans. The temperatures are pretty close. We've got 62, 50 and 66. I'm going to kick off the process. Oh, um, this is a command line process. So we could use our little friend, couldn't we? <laughs> the Schwarzenegger 2.0 is back. Let's go. <laughs> that activated all three projects at the same time. Now, this one came up first. This one came up second. We're still waiting for that one. And there it is. So yeah, the M2 Max is definitely beating every one of them. But the M1 Max is not that far behind. Let's see when the app will actually come up. All right, the app is installed on the M2 Max and it's coming up. There it is. The app is up and running. Oh, who's next? <laughs> the M2 Pro is next. And finally, the M1 Max. Wow, so that's actually an improvement 
improvement, not a huge improvement, but a slight improvement on both the M2 Pro and the M2 Max. And that's because we have 12 cores as opposed to 10 cores. Part of this process involves a multi-core build and part of it is a single core build. So it's a pretty good indication of what your mobile app development cycle would look like. Also, if you're doing cross-platform apps where there is going to be a build process that's probably going to be a single core as well as a multi-core build process. So this is a combination of both of those and it shows both of those off. I want to do one more test and it's a sustained long build. You've already seen me do this before on a clean machine with nothing running. But now that I have all that stuff running in the background, I want to see what kind of effect that's going to have. I've cloned this repository right here. This is the WebKit repository and basically it's Safari. There's instructions right here. If you want to try it, I'll link to it down below. There's a script for it. It's nice and easy. Tools, scripts, and then build WebKit. But uh, I'm also going to include a time command at the beginning so that we know how long it takes because this takes a while. All right, I'm all set up here and I'm going to go have lunch while this is running. I'll be back. You don't have to have lunch. You can have lunch. You probably already have lunch while you're watching this video, right? Or maybe you're on the toilet. I don't know. I'll be back soon. I just came back to do a real quick check here and I noticed something really odd. The M2 Max actually jumped up to 105 degrees and I'm hearing fans. What's interesting, I'm hearing fans from these two machines, the two new machines, but not from this one. This one does have the fans spinning at 1500 RPM, which is the highest I've seen it before. And it's hitting 100. I'm not hearing the fan from this one. These two are over 2000 RPM, 2200 RPM and hitting 105 degrees. So considerably hotter and a little bit noisier. If we check out the actual body temperature, uh, this one 40 degrees for the M1 Max, 39 degrees for the M2 Pro, and 38 degrees for the M2 Max. Pretty intense build. And I haven't seen this previously because, well, I was just running a naked build without anything else. Now we're actually, we have a lot of stuff going on on the computer, don't we? Let's take a look at activity monitor while this is happening. So on the M2 Pro, there's our CPU load. Here's the CPU history for the M1 Max. And here it is for the M2 Max. And the M2s are both really pegging all the cores, all 12 cores. So I'm gonna guess that they're gonna finish first and then the M1 Max because they're really fully utilizing all the cores and there's more cores. Let's have a look at the memory usage. We are using zero swap on the M1 Max. It's a 64 gigabyte machine. So I expected there to be no swap used. Zero swap here on the M2 Max, also a 64 gigabyte machine. And what about this one? Okay. Zero swap used on this one too so it's not a hugely memory intensive build uh, okay i'm back and that took a while the results are actually in line with what i expected but i did not expect there to be such a big difference between the m2 pro and the m2 max check this out on the m1 max i got a time of 19 minutes and 15 seconds that's pretty expected on the m2 pro 18 minutes 49 seconds so not that much faster but still faster on the m2 max 15 minutes 49 seconds quite a lot faster and this is a huge build and with builds like this it matters quite a bit now the next question a difficult question if you already have the m1 max it's not worth upgrading if you have like a macbook air yeah all these machines are going to be way more powerful than macbook airs if you have an, an older intel machine these are going to blow it away out of the water if you're not doing any kind of video work or working with games the m2 pro is actually a really good deal right now if you're upgrading from an older machine if you're already have an M1 Pro, probably not worth it. This 16 inch M2 Pro right here costs over a thousand dollars less than either one of these machines. You're getting some really nice performance out of that with 12 cores. And so far in the test that I've done here, it's been doing really well and I'm pretty impressed. If I wasn't doing video work, that might be the machine for me. And make sure to subscribe if you wanna see other developer related tests like Android, web development, Python, Docker, game development, and machine learning. Thank you very much, folks. I will see you in the next one.